Now, I know what some of you are going to say just after reading the title of this video. It's obvious what happened to Luke Skywalker. Didn't you watch The Last Jedi? He started to train a new generation, failed, and out of shame and guilt, and after everything else in his life, he broke and went into exile. Nothing needs fixing here, and what more to the story could you need or want than that? And, well, for some people, I guess that answer alone works, and that's fine for them, while for other people, there simply is no answer that could ever be given that would make them start to believe Luke would ever give up like he did. Like Mark Hamill said before the movie even came out, that was Jake Skywalker, not my Luke Skywalker. And a lot of people out there didn't care about hearing the story of Jake, they just got upset they never got to hear the story of Luke. And between these two extremes, between those who accept The Last Jedi completely as is and those who never will, there are a lot of people with a lot of questions about what happened. How exactly did it all go so wrong for Luke Skywalker? Did he start to train his new students similar to how the Jedi of the prequel era were trained? and hence why he seemed to blame those Jedi for his failings? Or was he instead more open to trying new ways, and this was the ultimate reason for his failure? How old exactly was Ben when Luke started to train him? Did he even want to train him, or did he just get begged by Han and Leia and eventually give in to them? What event, if any, actually pushed Han and Leia to be convinced there was too much Vader in their son and sent him to Luke? And speaking of age, how old were Luke's other students, and where did he find them? And why would Half turn on him and join with Ben in slaughtering the rest? Was Ben actively working against him the whole time? And that's maybe what Luke saw in his mind, that his own nephew was trying to turn his other students against him and undermine the whole thing. Was Ben's plan all along to create the Knights of Ren and destroy his uncle? That just might begin to explain why Luke had the initial reaction that he did, I guess. And I do certainly understand The Last Jedi didn't have the time to address all these questions, but maybe finding a way to address some of them, and thus giving more context to what happened, would have helped some fans buy into all of this. Especially if we'd learned it had been Ben's plan all along to bring down and destroy Luke Skywalker and everything he was trying to build. Maybe if we'd somehow been shown that what Luke saw in Ben's mind was that it wasn't so much Snoke's influence that had turned him to the dark side, but Ben's own desire to find a way to finally reject the light and become one with the darkness. Maybe Luke saw that Ben truly wanted to finish what Darth Vader had started, and that he was the one using Snoke, not the other way around. This not only somewhat explains Luke's initial harsh reaction, but also explains why Kylo murdered his own father in the hopes of ending that pesky pull to the light and why he suddenly turned on Snoke and killed him, because he'd been wanting to do his own thing all along, but didn't know how, much like Vader wanted to escape from under the control of the Emperor. And I certainly know a lot of you out there just don't care anymore, or you don't even want to hear Luke's downfall explained because you're never going to buy into it one way or the other. But the thing is, the story is inevitable. It will be told somewhere by somebody at some point. And if I had a guess, I'd say it'll be in a book, or maybe even a series of books, that will come out shortly after episode 9. Now, I think it could have made for a very interesting animated series, but alas, we're getting resistance instead. However, in a recent poll I asked what people would think about an anthology movie that delved into what happened to Luke after the events of Return of the Jedi and leading up to the events of The Last Jedi. Basically, it'd be a movie about what he went through when rebuilding the Jedi Order and how it all went so wrong with Ben. And just to be clear, there are no rumors of such a movie being made and likely never will be. I just thought it was an interesting idea that I'd run past all of you to get your take on. Because I personally think if executed right, and that is the key, it could be a franchise repairing idea. Now that execution part seemed to be the biggest fear for most of you as well out there who didn't like this idea because you thought Disney would ruin what could otherwise maybe be a good movie. Others still were opposed because we already know how it's all going to end, and there's no story, no matter how well told, that'll make up for the way Luke was in The Last Jedi. And this is where I kind of find myself somewhere in between, because even though I doubt there's a story that could be told that I'll ever make me fully accept Luke in The Last Jedi, I do think there's one that could at least give me enough context to make it somewhat believable. And that is my biggest problem right now, I just don't believe it, which is a big part of the reason why the movie fails for me, though there are certainly other problems as well. And not to turn this into a full-blown video complaining about Luke in The Last Jedi, but him having a moment of weakness and considering or almost killing his nephew is one thing, but him doing nothing about it after the fact and instead running and hiding out of shame and guilt is another entirely. And it's that one that I cannot buy without one hell of a good explanation. And the thing is, there could be a hell of an explanation, or at least could have been and maybe still can be, because let's not forget that both Obi-Wan and Yoda exiled themselves and let Palpatine run amok for nearly two decades, 
putting all their hopes in Luke and Leia to maybe one day be the savior. However, as I've argued elsewhere, it's likely that both Yoda and Obi-Wan spent that time in exile retraining themselves in the ways of the Jedi, ways they had strayed from, and was the reason Palpatine was able to defeat them in the first place. And the funny thing here is that I think a lot of people assumed this would be the case for Luke in The Last Jedi as well, that maybe he had gone to do the exact same thing as Yoda and Obi-Wan had before him, hence he went looking for the first Jedi Temple to learn what was the true ways of the Jedi. And to that you might still ask why Luke wouldn't help his friends and family first, I mean it's basically his MO after all to help them above all else, and him not doing as such is the reason why a lot of people are upset in the first place, and the simple answer could have been that he was being a true Jedi now, that he wasn't running off to save only those he cared about, but was trying to save everyone. It would have been the opposite of the mistake he made in The Empire Strikes Back, and could have shown true growth for his character. And perhaps this was his original intent. Perhaps he did go there for answers. I mean, if all he wanted to do was die, why bother finding the first Jedi Temple at all? He could have easily gone back to, say, Tatooine and become a hermit till death, if that were the case. Though, yes, someone may have known to look for him there and still found him. Nevertheless, finding the first Jedi Temple was a big hassle if he just wanted a place to die. And even taking the last Jedi completely at face value, I highly doubt that was his original intent. Instead, perhaps something he found once he got there about the original Jedi changed his mind on everything. What exactly that could be, who knows, but maybe it has something to do with the prophecy and Luke, for whatever reason, not liking his family's place in the grand scheme of things. Or it could be something else entirely, I suppose. The only odd part, of course, is that Luke would have likely found it in the old sacred texts. Texts that Rey now has and that Yoda seems to imply are all she needs. So it would most likely have to be Luke interpreting something wrong or not reading it entirely, which Yoda did kind of hint at, and Rey would now have to get it right, which is not an idea everyone's going to love. However here, what is really interesting about this eventual story about Luke, which again will get told somewhere, is that Mark Hamill is confirmed to be in episode 9, and there's a good chance whatever he says, and he'll likely speak as a force ghost to Rey and or Kylo, could be the foundation of the story to come. In fact, I'd be surprised if this next movie doesn't involve a more enlightened Luke coming back to further explain his actions, or lack thereof, to Rey and maybe even encouraging her to still try and find the good in Kylo after the way things ended between them and The Last Jedi. And I'm not trying to suggest a major retcon is incoming, but I do think Disney and Lucasfilm are wise enough to realize, even if they won't publicly admit it, that The Last Jedi did more harm than good to their franchise. And even if you love The Last Jedi, you have to admit that, to put it bluntly, this rift in the fanbase kind of sucks. Though I suppose you can adopt the I don't care about the haters stance, though in my last video, I very much tried to make the point that the haters are being mislabeled and are just people who deeply care about this franchise and disagree with its direction, which they have every right to, just like someone has every right to enjoy its current direction. Anyway, though again, there will likely be nothing resembling a public apology or acknowledgement that The Last Jedi damaged the franchise. I do expect Disney and Lucasfilm are wise enough to try and bring longtime fans back into the fold. They'd be fools not to, and I'm not suggesting they will be or should be catered to over those who enjoyed The Last Jedi and the current direction, but there exists in the story about Luke Skywalker the possibility to appease both sides of this debate. Because if you're a fan of The Last Jedi, I don't see why you would be opposed to a story that gives more context to Luke's fall from grace. Quite the opposite, I'd imagine. It'd be something you would probably look forward to. And despite the fears many expressed about just how Disney would get this whole thing wrong, I think many fans wouldn't be able to help themselves but still be interested in a story about Luke post-Return of the Jedi, one that begins to explain where it all went wrong. And in a dream scenario, you could even involve both George Lucas and Mark Hamill in the writing and development process. And again, this is all very hypothetical, and little more than a delusion of grandeur. But the idea of Hamill and Lucas collaborating in the creation of a Star Wars movie about Luke Skywalker sounds like the perfect way to please pretty much every Star Wars fan out there. Now, do I honestly think something like this could ever happen? Well, probably not, but who knows for sure, because I again guarantee you that behind closed doors, Disney and Lucasfilm are trying to figure out what to do with this franchise, how to lure back in fans that it's lost, while also not angering the fans that have been generally happy with all things Disney Star Wars. 
And I know some of you will want to point out how it feels like they've done nothing but attack the fans as of late, and the fans critical of The Last Jedi in particular, of course. But Disney did not become the top name in entertainment for no reason, and I fully believe that, eventually, they will do what they must to right this ship. Let's not forget they spent $4 billion to obtain the rights to Star Wars, and they certainly didn't do it just to destroy the franchise. They did it to make money, and that's hard to do when a lot of your fans aren't happy. Well, that's all I've got for this time, but now I'm going to ask you to tell me where and how you think the next part of Luke Skywalker's story should unfold, or instead tell me why you loved or hated the way he was in The Last Jedi, or just tell me why the character means so much to you in the first place. And next weekend, I'll devote the entire Let's Talk Some Star Wars video just to your comments, and dedicate the whole thing to Luke Skywalker and Mark Hamill himself. So leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.